Check out these two shots. Can you see the difference? Side by side, it's pretty clear, but these are unaltered shots from two different scenes in the 2021 anime Super Cub. In the first one, the main character enters this faculty room doing a new job for the first time. You can see how her social anxiety and inexperience is reflected in the dampened color palette of that shot. In the second shot, she's returned to the room after getting more experience doing her job and talking to people, and the directors have boosted the color saturation to reflect that she is much more comfortable and confident. It's an old trick that goes back at least as far is 1939's The Wizard of Oz. I can even use it right here. Here's a shot with low color saturation, and here's a shot with saturation boosted. This technique has been used in anime like Konohana Katan and Boogie Pop Phantom before, but perhaps never to the extent that we see in Super Cub. And it's just one of the techniques in color and sound hidden away in this show that makes it such a great anime. Let's check it out. Super Cub follows a young girl named Kogama, who's a second year high school student in Yamanashi Prefecture. If you're familiar with Laid Back Camp, it's the same setting. Lots of mountains, lots of natural beauty. Kogama is in a bit of a rut psychologically and socially until one day she decides to purchase a Honda Super Cub, which allows her greater freedom of movement and provides some focus to her life as she now has new skills to learn and a new responsibility to care for. As she's able to expand the places that she can visit with her Super Cub, her social circle starts to slowly expand as well. She meets two other girls, the passionate and beautiful Reiko, who's obsessed with cubs, and the diminutive but determined Eniwa Shi. These three form the main group, and the series helps them and the viewers learn more about super cubs and each other. Most people will notice the significant change in the level of color saturation as soon as Koguma kickstarts her cub for the first time. There's also a bump in color saturation during the OP, and a pretty noticeable one when Koguma drinks the Hawaiian coffee in episode 8. But these boosts in saturation are all over the place. It can be really fun hunting for these Easter eggs to try to spot when the directors wanted to enhance the viewer's emotional response or symbolize a moment of inner change in the characters. For instance, in episode one, there's another boost in color saturation when Koguma is able to start her cub again at the convenience store, but it's much more subtle this time. It's nighttime, so the overall palette is darker, but there's also a cut right before the change so that we're not staring at the same scene when it bumps the saturation. Now, this makes the change easier to miss, but that extra boost of color can enhance the viewer's relief at the cub working again, whether or not they notice that shift in color usage. And one thing I like about their use of color saturation as a symbol is that they don't overdo it. A lesser show would have made the switch glaringly obvious every time, but this show trusts the viewer. They realize that even if someone never picks up directly on the color use, they're still going to feel the effects subconsciously and they'll have a more positive experience overall. These color boosts are most noticeable when the camera stays on the same shot, but keep your eye out for boosts after a cut as well. Check out the subtle color saturation boost as Koguma rides through the intersection. It's a big moment for her character. There's a significant saturation bump here, but it's harder to notice unless you're looking for it. I won't spoil all these bumps, but see how many you can spot the next time you watch the show. The music in the show hints at the true nature of Koguma and Reiko's relationship. If you think they're just friends, that's Liebestrom by Franz Liszt playing in the background. It means dreams of love in German. Though I should point out that Koguma had her first dream about her cub about four minutes before this scene. So those dreams of love could be about her cub instead. However, when Koguma is on her way to join her class during their field trip, she sees the Shonen Bullet Road, which reminds her of Reiko and makes her smile. The music that starts playing at that point is Eric Satie's Jete Vu, or I Want You. I love the little musical touches in the show. Like, if you're familiar with classical music, you probably picked up on the use of Vivaldi's Winter Concerto as a perfect fit for a dramatic winter scene late in the show. But did you catch the bardcore version of the closing theme song playing in the hardware store? It's also playing in the clothing store in episode 4. During the opening scene of episode one, we hear WC's Arabesque Number no. One, probably one of the most beautiful classical pieces ever written, as we see scenes of a modern town coexisting with breathtaking natural beauty. This is a pretty common theme in anime. The beautiful music also hints at a world of wonder and imagination, which is cut off in that opening scene by a harsh alarm clock and then silence. It shows us that Koguma's life at this point is devoid of any sense of wonder or exploration. The soundtrack focuses heavily on sound effects, as Koguma's life is taken up entirely by just what is physically present, moving from one task to another. Those moments when music is involved are the moments when Koguma is finally able to appreciate life. It's appropriate that Claire de Lune plays during one of the few scenes where they show the bright full moon. This is appropriate since Claire de Lune means moonlight in French. There are many other night scenes in the show, and a couple of shots of the moon with silence, but there's no other song that plays when you see the moon in the show, at least as far as I could tell. That's pretty cool. 
Kokomo is a bit mysterious in that she has no parents, she lives by herself, and she goes by just that one name, Kogama, which in Japanese means little bear cub. The names of our other main characters don't have relevant meanings for the show, but I'll post some notes in the description if you're curious about Reiko and she. As an introvert, I really appreciated that the show was able to let Kogama keep a lot of that mystery to herself. There's a subtle transition in her character arc where her untalkative demeanor at the beginning of the show seems to be the product of social awkwardness and a general feeling of being overwhelmed. But by the end of the show, Kogama is confident and capable, though she still maintains those core personality traits of being a person of few words and keeping people somewhat at a distance. So I liked that the goal of the show was to help Kogama learn to love her life on her own terms and not to cure her of her introverted nature. By the way, this was the very first voice acting role for Yuki Yomichi, who voiced Kogama. How crazy is that? The show nails what it's like when you move out on your own for the first time. That stark difference from being around people and then returning to an empty house. And the show reminds me of when I first moved out to Tucson, Arizona for grad school. It was the first time that I did not have any roommates or family around, it was just me. Kogama riding around on her cub, especially to the convenience store, reminds me of when I would drive around Tucson at night. Kogama's goofy smile at her cub is the same look that I have whenever I get some new anime for my shelf. And can we talk about Kogama eating cold, microwavable food? Like, the only time that stuff's good is when you heat it up. She at least looks at the microwave, but she thinks the line is too long. Don't do it. Don't do it. Ah, she did it. Okay, that grosses me out every time. When we see the inside of Reiko's cabin, it's spacious but fairly empty. There's mostly just wood and mechanical tools on the walls, with very little else in the way of decor. This could be a product of Reiko's no-nonsense attitude, showing that she cares for little else than her cub, but it could also point to Reiko working through a similar feeling of emptiness that Kogama was experiencing before the two met. The WC piece that is playing, while Kogama remembers Reiko, is The Girl with the Flaxen Hair, based on a poem by Le Comte de Lille. And even though Reiko's hair is dark and not flaxen or blonde, it's still a good fit. By the way, this is not how you remember a friend, this is how you remember a crush. If you want a clue about what Kogama might be thinking about when she thinks of Reiko, then read the short poem that the music is based on. A brief part of it says, Talk to me please, girl with fine curls and long lashes, for love in clear summer sunlight has soared with the lark and sung now. I'll put a link to the full poem in the description. Reiko's personality is also accentuated by the use of rock music in the soundtrack. The only time we hear anything approaching hard rock in the show is when Reiko is revving up her bike and herself to meet a challenge head on. Though there are other times where the soundtrack uses classical music with Reiko, maybe that's showing Kogun's influence on her through the use of music. The opening scene of episode two fascinates me because you can interpret it two different ways, and there's problems with each one. So the normally quiet and socially restrained Kogama gets out of her chair and announces to her class that she rode her new motorbike to school. This sets off a huge reaction from the whole class. Kogama is then shown staring out the window and grinning a sheepish grin. It's also pretty cool that we get another boost in color saturation right when Kogama makes her announcement. Now you can take everything at face value. Kogama makes what is a bold decision for her to step out of her comfort zone. The color saturation represents a step in her progression as a character, and she sits and grins sheepishly because she can't believe she did something so out of the ordinary for her. The problem with this interpretation is that later, she mentions her cub around students who were clearly there during her announcement, and they have no idea what she's talking about. Of course, the world doesn't revolve around Kogama, so maybe the other girl wasn't paying attention or she already forgot, but this doesn't fit well with the class's massive reaction earlier. The other way to interpret this scene is that Kogama never stood up and announced her cub to the class, and the whole thing was a daydream. In this interpretation, Kogama stays true to her inner nature as a somewhat non-social person, and she remains in her seat the whole time, but she daydreams about standing up, speaking to the class, and getting that big reaction. She grins sheepishly because she was daydreaming about something so brash and out of character, and that boost in color saturation is the signal that the daydream has started. You'll note that when Kogama is sitting by herself, the color palette has returned to its subdued tone. The problem with this interpretation is that there's nothing else in the show that hints at this type of playfulness with reality. Everything is played pretty straight in the rest of the show, and the color bump is consistent for showing moments of character growth, unless, unless the color boost has always signaled moments of unreality. Kogama never bought a cub in the first place, and the whole show is a daydream in her head. But probably not. Let me know how you interpret that scene down in the comments. Okay, also, whenever Kogama says hi to Reiko and she barely responds, this would fit with the everything is a daydream interpretation if those are the only times where Kogama actually talks to Reiko, and all of their other interactions are a fantasy in her own mind. I'm just saying. 
One thing I didn't care for was how the show at times depicted Aniwa Shi as childish, pathetic, or powerless just because she didn't own a super cub. It kind of bothers me that the character's physical development seems tied or at least correlated to their connection to super cubs. The character without a super cub is physically weak with a childish build that she admits hasn't changed since middle school. The character who has the most experience with super cubs to the point of becoming obsessed with them is the tallest and most physically developed. It's almost as though the more money that you give the Honda Corporation, the more conventionally beautiful you will become. When we first meet Shi, she has a position of responsibility with the cultural festival, and she seems to be more successfully integrated socially than Koguma or maybe even Reiko. She also has dreams and goals for her father's cafe that she works hard for, so seeing her get so down on herself because she doesn't have a motorcycle feels like a disservice to her character. It felt at times like she was a tag-along little sister, pretending that her bicycle was one of the super cubs that her cool older sisters ride, even though they're all the same age. The show does try towards the end to paint Aniwa as the true motivation for Koguma's character progression, but I wasn't quite buying it. One knock that people have against the show is that the commercialism becomes very in-your-face at times. This is based on a manga, but it sure feels like a commercial for Honda occasionally. There's plenty of product placement and focus on Honda logos, but my favorite moment of abject commercialism is when Shino the mechanic looks at a specific brand of Honda motor oil and says flat out, that is the best kind. I mean, this man is the Atticus Finch of anime mechanics. I would trust him with my very soul, so of course I'm buying whatever brand of oil he's pushing. I will admit that the cub worship does get a little annoying in the second half of the series, but for the most part, I just accepted it as the price to pay for having this cool little show. There's one more little Easter egg that's hinted at in the OP of the show. Not only does the OP have a fairly obvious example of the color bump while Koguma is riding her cub, but it hints at the seasonal structure of the show. The show's arranged by season into four arcs of three episodes each. A lot of people probably pick up on that, but there's another hidden visual quirk that is governed by the seasons. Like a bear growing its winter coat, Koguma changes her main outfit for each of the seasons. Dark blue and white school uniform with a skirt for spring, gym clothes for summer, red sweater for fall, and orange coat and pants for winter. She wears her seasonal outfit in every episode of that arc. So it's pretty cool that two of those visual Easter eggs that you can keep an eye out for are prefaced right there in the opening sequence, almost as though it's giving you a guide of what to look for. Super Cub is an underappreciated gem with tons of secrets, and a great pick for anybody who likes slice of life or healing anime. If you like this video, check out the deep dive that I did for the Maiden Abyss movie. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.